How close to tears were you after you won? Uh, I was very close uh, to tears. Uh, it was uh, I just barely hold uh, my tears uh, on 18. Uh, very emotional moment. What would, what's the first thing you do when you get home? You know, uh, I will embrace my family, for sure. Thirty-one men wear the green jacket of Masters Champions. Thirty-one living men know this particular glory. On a golf course carved out of the Georgia Pines, over four days in April, This is the story of how the green jacket was won in 1999. Thursday morning, 8 a.m. The tournament begins with three legends of the game. The squire, Gene Saracen. Born the same year as Bobby Jones, Gene Saracen is now 97. Two times Masters Champion, Lord Byron Nelson. Byron Nelson, 87 years old. Three times Masters Champion, slamming Sammy Sneed. Sam Sneed is 86. Tom Watson at 16. Yeah. Lauren Roberts at nine. <laughs> VJ Singh at 18. Open your notebooks. The test of this Masters has begun, and the best in the world hope they're ready to take it. Jose Maria Olafabo now driving. Tiger Woods on the tee. Four please, Phil Mickelson now driving. Is that Phil's drive? Yeah. How nervous are you following the flight of your first shot? You've got just no room for error right off the get-go. And then, boom, you're into the heart of the golf course off the first tee. David Duvall's troubles come at the 13th tee. He's the pre-tournament favorite with four wins this season. But his tee shot is in a tributary of Ray's Creek, and it leads to the second of three bogeys in a row. While Tiger Woods makes three birdies, two bogeys, and an eight, all in his first nine holes. 69 is the best score of the round. And 36-year-old Masters rookie Brandel Chambly is the first to post it. Scott McCarran in his 13th round at Augusta breaks 70 for the first time. And Davis Love shoots 32 on his second nine, the low score of the day to claim his share of the lead. 
Jumbo Ozaki at the 10th hole. The Eagle put him in a tie for the lead until he bogeyed 17 and 18. Winds kicked up in the late afternoon, and as Mark O'Mara played 14, sirens went off, suspending play. As the storm cleared, players returned to the practice green and the driving range. It's the first big one. And after a 90-minute delay, play resumed. Greg Norman's first shot was from the tee at the par 3 16th. It seemed the delay had not bothered him at all. Sometimes the, the break does you the world of good, and sometimes it hurts you. And, uh, you know, I wasn't looking forward to sitting around for another 30, 40 minutes, but at the end of the day, uh, they came out and hit a great shot. So, all in all, I'm happy. Nick Price made two birdies after the rain, and though he wouldn't be able to finish his round until Friday morning, he shot 69 and made it a four way tie for the lead. Shortly before 8 p.m., Mark O'Mara birdied the 18th hole as he did one year ago on Sunday. You like 18 here, huh? Well, I mean, likes last, you. Well, I don't know. I didn't hit as good a drive today, but uh, you know what happened last year was just absolutely incredible. And you know, this year I'm a little bit of pressure on trying to be the defending champion, but it's uh, to get a 70 under my belt early feels really good. Davis Love the third matches the score his father shot 35 years ago when Davis Love Jr. shared the first round lead in the Masters. Seven players are one back, including the defending champion and the 1994 champion, Jose Maria Olathabo. While Greg Norman, who missed the cut last year and then had surgery on his shoulder, is two shots behind. There are six amateurs in the field, and their low score comes from the British amateur champion, Sergio Garcia, at even par. 44-year-old Greg Norman has known more heartbreak at Augusta than any player in the field. Four times he has had victory in his grasp, and four times it has slipped away. In this second round, he goes out in 34. Birdies the difficult par 3 12th. and has this third shot at the par 5 13th. He shoots 68 and moves to the top of the leaderboard. I don't know what sentimental favorite. How do you determine that from 96 or because I'm getting old? <laughs> Which one is it? <laughs> Two-time U.S. Open champion Lee Jansen at the third hole. <laughs> Shoots 69 and ties Norman. Davis Love struggles on the second nine. But Birdie's 18 and is two shots off the early lead. Nick Price at 14. Shoots 72 and ties Davis Love. Ernie Ells. Second shot at the par 5, 13. Sets up an eagle, and he's one under for the tournament. 
while Brad Faxon takes a different route to his three at the 13th. In the late afternoon, the winds are up again. It killed me on 12. <laughs> the wind cropped up and uh, I backed off a couple times and it died down again. As soon as I hit the shot, popped back up. It's just really weird out there because you have to really concentrate and understand that the, the wind is swirly because uh, it was into our face on 12, but dead downwind on 13. It just doesn't really make sense. David Duvall finds the water at the 15th hole. <laughs> and makes a triple bogey eight. But the shot that bothered him the most was this one. His third at the par 5, 13. I spun the ball backwards 60 feet, you know. He shot 74 and was one over for the Masters. He spun back. There are new leaders on the course in the late afternoon. One of them is long-hitting Scott McCarran who reaches the par 5 15th with a 5 iron. Setting up his third birdie in a row. And then birdies 18 for a 68. And is 7 under for the tournament. Not quite good enough for the lead. Jose Maria Olathabal has a putter that can't miss today. But his most magical shot comes at the 15th hole. I hit my second shot just over the green, and uh, um, I had a very delicate shot. Uh, chipped and running with an iron iron uh, through the through the green, and um, you know it. I just uh, hit a great shot. I was very pleased. It's one of those shots that uh, demands a lot of touch, and I was able to, uh, to do that. At 18, the way he's playing, they should just give him this putt. Six birdies, no bogeys, and a one-shot lead for a champion, who four years ago thought he might never play golf again when a misdiagnosed back injury kept him out of the sport for a year and a half. He shoots the low round of the tournament to move in front. Norman and Jansen in the day three shots behind. Bernhard Langer also shoots 66, to become one of six players in contention at two under par. Tiger Woods shoots his 10th consecutive round of par or better, a Masters record. The defending champion struggles to a 76, while 56 players make the cut, which comes at plus four. On Friday, Arnold Palmer produces an echo of his four Masters titles. Get in there. It is his 45th consecutive start at Augusta, a record we hope he'll add to well into the next millennium. But Jack Nicklaus will not tee it up this year, ending a streak that began in 1959. Hip replacement surgery has kept him out of the field, but not off the course, where on Tuesday, he surveys the dramatic changes made this year, starting with the newly lengthened second hole. And you're not even gonna smell the bug, are you? That's got to be 20 yards for the bunker, isn't it? I'm just 10 hoping, yards. I'm hoping to get it close enough to hit a three with them bunker. That's what I'm trying to do. Expect On to 11. And this is a big change here. Where the green and pond have been raised, both bunkers removed and a new one added. Raised creek widened for flood control and brought into play with new back cup positions. It's certainly a long shot. Here's the water, though, isn't it? Maybe it might go for a boat. 
But this tour with the chairman is not all business. Well, this looks like a three iron shot to me. <laughs> At the 12th tee, he can't resist borrowing a club from Carlos Franco. What are you playing? Away, maybe. Five iron? <laughs> Over the water, please. <laughs> No problem. The shot lands on the green. The tour continues at 15, where the driving area has been narrowed with a new stand of trees to the golfer's right and a second cut of one and three eighths inch grass at every hole. Well, you planted some trees behind Ike Tree, too. Yeah. Shame on you. And then the new tee at 17. And a final wave to patrons who will have to wait one year before they see him play here again. Considering the conditions that you had and uh, uh, with the golf ball and the equipment that we have today, I think you've made the proper changes. I think the golf course is uh, really is good. And as usual, it's uh, in perfect condition. Well, thank you. And we appreciate your comments and, and your opinion and the great respect for, that we have for you here at Augusta. And, we're happy that you were at your hip healed and you were able to be here, and we're counting on you being back next year and going after number seven. Well, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be here trying to go after number seven, but we'll, next year will be fun. I'm looking Good. forward to it. Thanks, sir. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. Four amateurs have made the cut this year, the most since 1985. Matt Kuchar was the last one in, and he needed this spectacular eagle at 13 to get there. He qualified by finishing among the leaders in last year's Masters and U.S. Open. Joining him this year are 19-year-old Trevor Immelman from Cape Town, South Africa. Forty-four-year-old Virginian Tom McKnight, who regained his amateur status in 1984. And 19-year-old Sergio Garcia setting up a spirited battle for the coveted low amateur crown, won by Kuchar a year ago. On Saturday, birdies at seven, eight, and nine get a few people to begin noticing Steve Pate. But he has a 50-footer at 10. And that makes four birdies in a row. He faces an incredibly fast putt at 11. And that's five in a row. The Masters record is six, held by Johnny Miller, Mark Kalkovecchia, David Toms, and now Steve Pate. His third shot at 13. And this putt for seven in a row. He moves near the top of the leaderboard. puts his name in the record book and gets a cooling off from Lee Westwood. What was the conversation going on as he made his fifth, his sixth, his seventh birdie in a row? Um, we, we didn't chat too much. I just, you know, kept saying good putt, good putt, good putt, good putt. He's not the only hot golfer. <laughs> Tiger Woods, Eagles 13. Shoot 70 to move to two under for the tournament. While David Duvall birdies Amen Corner, holds 11, 12, and 13 for his round of 70 and is one under for the tournament. But the leader, Ola Thabel, is having a different kind of streak. I couldn't make a part all day long. On six, I hit a seven iron uh, just uh, off the green, uh, chipping around with a nine, and missed it from, again, five feet. On seven, I had a chance from uh, seven, eight feet, missed it. 
on eight, uh, had a chance from uh, 12 feet, missed it. On nine, from uh, six feet, missed it. On 10, from uh, 12 feet, missed it. And with a frustrated leader falling back, a talented field bunches up. And the curtain rises on the theater of the 12th hole. First up is very, very difficult in 12. You pray that your partner birdies 11. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, he's, and he's far enough behind, it doesn't matter. You nobody, know? first, nobody first up has hit that green. Well, there you go. You're into the wind on the tee, and you get to the green, and the pin's blown away from you. I don't know what you're supposed to do. In his pairing with Nick Price, Davis Love is first up on the 12th tee. And bogeys. In his pairing with Lee Jansen, Greg Norman is first up on 12. The ball disappears. He has five minutes to find it, and in the spirit of golf and good sportsmanship, his fellow competitor, Lee Jansen, takes an active role in the search. But the ball is lost. I never once did I think it was going to be 20 yards past the flag. And hitting an eight on 175 is not my speed. Um, so who knows where the ball is? I doubt, I would like to know how many balls have been lost in the back of the 12th green at Augusta on the third round of a major championship. Um, you know, that's just, it's just mystifying. I would say to myself, just accept it. You hit a good shot. Um, you know, that's just the run of the mill. Uh, those things happen. Um, I didn't hit a bad shot. That's what I'm saying to myself going back there. When I got on the tee, I, you know, I knew the yardage. I put my tee right next to the divot that I just hit before because I knew exactly what I aimed it right at the same tree the ball went exactly the same line and landed 25 yards short when I walked on the green it was, it was a putt that I saw all the way I never doubted that I was going to make the miss the putt I was always going to go in right off the putter face The response to that magnificent bogey electrified Norman. That's the most I've ever felt on a golf course. I've felt some good stuff at the British Open but, and in Australia, but that's the most I've ever felt here in the United States. In the middle of all that, Lee Jansen had birdied the hole and moved into a tie for the lead. As Colin Montgomery said, you pray for the man you're paired with to birdie 11 and be first on the tee at 12. In his pairing with Ola Thabel, Scott McCarran birdied 11. The result, another lost golf ball, and in this case, a triple bogey. Ola Thabel, with the advantage of hitting second, set up another birdie chance. But on this day, it was just another miss. More trouble for Norman at 13. I did all the work on 12, and I lay it up perfectly on 13. I walked down there, and I'm in, in a sandy little hole, and that's when I had to fight hard to keep my composure after making six there. That bogey dropped him two shots back at four under par. But trouble lurked everywhere on this golf course. Davis Love at 15. Double bogey, five under par. He was paired with Nick Price, who had a difficult first nine, but then made two spectacular shots. 
First, an eagle at 13. And then, after missing the green at 16, the only birdie of the day on that hole. Out in 40, in and 32. Ola Thabal at 15. A three iron second shot to the par five. Hits into the bank and barely climbs up on the green. From where he's able to two putt for his only birdie of the day. And that's good enough in these conditions for a two shot lead. At 16, Jansen with a tough putt for par. Falls back to four under. Greg Norman from the second cut at 18. Trying to guess out of the rough, was it gonna fly, is it not gonna fly? How do you hit it, how do you not hit it? Probably the shot of the afternoon for me. The birdie got him to minus six and put him in the final pairing for tomorrow's final round. Norman and Ola Thabo, two men who may have doubted if they'd ever be in this position again. After three rounds, it's a wide open Masters and these leaders do not lack pursuers. Paraguay's Carlos Franco shoots 68 and joins a foursome at four under par, 212. Colin Montgomery heads another quartet at three under par, only four shots from the lead. And in the battle for low amateur, the 44-year-old McKnight leads the 20-year-old Kucher and the two teenagers. At day's end, father and son, both perhaps dreaming about tomorrow. We all want to have the lead. We all want to take the final shot. In the competition for low amateur, Sergio Garcia made a dramatic move at Amen Corner. First with a birdie at 12. And then another at 13, which gave him the outright lead. Tom McKnight had to save par at 16. But bogeyed and the 19-year-old son of a golf professional won the low amateur title, playing in what could be the first of many masters. This was the amateur class of 1999, setting a standard for the start of a new millennium. On Sunday, wind gusts in the 20s and temperatures in the 80s made for the toughest conditions of the week. And David Duvall shot his way back into the tournament. An eagle at the second hole, the first eagle he ever made in the Masters. And then he birdied seven, eight, and ten to get to five under par. Three shots from the lead. But made another major mistake, his second shot at 11. And his third ball in the water. I was a little disappointed with my play. Um, the golf course was perfect again, as it always is. Uh, you know, but I, uh, I didn't quite click all week. You know, I was close, but it never quite got there for me, and uh, I think it might come up a little bit short. Tiger Woods at 12. But it's the only bright spot in a round of 75. In the wide open Masters, Lee Westwood gained a share of the lead early before dropping back. Bob Estes tied for the lead with this birdie at nine. 
but couldn't hold it. And at least seven other top players were within range on the first nine Sunday. Before the tournament settled into a four-man duel among Davis Love, Steve Pate, and the two men in the final pairing. Good luck to you, Jose. There's Greg's on when we go, which will be about oh, two or three minutes. Uh, you have the honor. Good luck, both of you. On the first hole, Ola Thobble showed the magic of his game. He got it up and down from the back of one today from the down slope and hit it to about four feet downwind. I mean, that, that was a phenomenal up and down straight off the bat. I wanted to start with a few parts uh, because I've always struggled on the front line somehow. Uh, and, uh, you know, I was really uh, not a very happy camper after five holes. You know, I bogey three, four, and five. And uh, I said to my caddy, uh, Brandon, I think we're giving this tournament away. It's a good thing that I buried uh, number six, and after that, you know, I was I was trying to to keep uh, calm and uh, try to focus on on every shot. Greg Norman, after bogeys at three and five, hits his third shot at the par five eight. And the birdie makes it a three-way tie for the lead. With Davis Love putting at nine to join them. Heading for the 10th tee Sunday, this Masters is a four-man dead heat. Ola Thabel out in 38 for birdie at 10. Norman to get even at the difficult 11th with its new back left cup placement. One shot behind Davis Love on the 13th tee. Greg Norman walks to the 12th tee, where because of that birdie on 11, he will be first to play. Oh. Ola Thabel studies the wind. and then sets himself for one of the most difficult shots in golf. After a penalty and a layup, Davis loves fourth shot to the par 5 13. Greg Norman's second shot at 12.
For Olathabal, another dangerous shot. And another bit of magic. Love for par. And a sensational save. Norman for par. And another four on this hole. Steve Pate after a bogey at 11. Yeah! Makes his first birdie of the day at 13. And with six holes to go, Ola Thabel holds a one-shot lead on the other three. Norman's second shot at 13. A four iron from 198 yards. Gives him an opportunity for Eagle. And the outright lead. I knew the putt. I aimed it dead straight and the ball broke a little bit left in the beginning and flattened out and just went a little right at the end. Greg Norman hit a wonderful putt. As soon as he hit it, it looked to me like he was going to go in all the way. And uh, while uh, that ball was rolling, I was saying to myself, OK, just try to make yours, uh, because I didn't want to go one shot behind. When I made mine, uh, I never doubted anything that he wouldn't make his. Ola Thabel for birdie and a tie. He pointed at me, I pointed at him, uh, just saying to, to each other that uh, those were great parts. Steve Pate for birdie at 15. One shot out of the lead. Norman on the tee at 14. And though it bounces back, it's in the new second cut. From where he misses the green and has this to save par. And drops to six under. The bogey gives Ola Thabel the lead to himself. Davis Love, two shots behind, has a virtually impossible chip at 16. The miracle birdie pulls him within one of Olafaba. Norman has laid up at 15 after another drive to the right. I laid it up and I had some mud on my ball. The ball just seemed to squirt a little bit right and went in the bunker. Olafaba also laid up but has this for birdie. Norman to have the hole. They hit a good putt. Just wasn't meant to make five there. His third bogey in four holes drops him two shots behind the leader. Who hits a six iron at the 170 yard par 316.
the hole cut in its traditional back left Sunday position at the bottom of the slope. In 1996, trailing Faldo by two, Norman put this tee shot in the water. But there's no memory of that today. Steve paid bogeyed 16 and had this to save par at 17. And dropped out of contention, three back, one to play. And center stage is now the 16th green. Norman in a must-make situation for birdie. Doesn't hit it. Ola Thabel from three feet. You cannot imagine what a three-footer that was. Uh, down the hill, uh, lightning quick, uh, left to right. I didn't know how the hell I made that part. But on the 17th tee, trouble for the leader. Oh, he's in the tree. He's in the tree. Yeah, yeah. yeah straight down. down. Straight down under the tree. Well, straight down. Straight down under the tree. Love will have a 15-foot putt for birdie to pull within one at 18. Ola Thabel tries to see how much trouble he's in at 17. I had a, a very delicate shot there. Uh, the wind was blowing hard, uh, downwind. Uh, the green was, uh, I knew it was going to be like concrete. I hit a lovely punchy five iron, make the ball run through the, through the fairway onto the green. And I was pleased. But he still faces a long, difficult two-putt for his par. Love for birdie. Shoots 71, finishes six under. Ola Thabel's long putt. Six feet past. And now Norman has another chance. If he can make birdie. When he won in 1994, he never three putted. And the same is true this week. And this is now the most important putt of the tournament. It's over. I died for a four on that hole, you know, and, and just when I got that four, I knew that uh, the, the jacket should be mine. And my putt on 17 was a good putt. I thought I made it and just went across the hole. Um, and then when he made his putt, you know, that was it. I mean, it's three shots, and I'm actually sitting on this 18 tee thinking, well, if I make two here like somebody else has done to me, I might have a chance of getting in a playoff. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't think that, but <laughs> when he made, when he hit it on the front edge of the green, that was it. Continuing the display of sportsmanship that has been the hallmark of this tournament, Ola Thabo waits and shares the walk to the 18th green. and finishes the tournament with a par. And wins his second green jacket. I said to Greg, I really enjoyed your company today. Uh, he said the same thing to me, and I said to him, just keep on trying because, you know, uh, 
You have the game and you deserve this jacket. And hopefully you will get it. I feel, I'm going to be honest with you right now, I feel 80% success, 20% failure. I mean, it, it, I mean that's, that's just the way I feel right now. I don't feel like, whereas back in 96, to finish off the answer to your question, it was probably 90% disappointment. And, well, 98%, 99% maybe. <laughs> but, you know, there's a difference in, in what it is. On the way to the green jacket ceremony, Jose Maria Olathabal had a hug for Jack Stevens, who was chairman when he won five years ago. And in a double win for Spain, the low amateur trophy was presented to Sergio Garcia. And the green jacket to the most deserving of champions. When I was at my lowest, uh, you know, I, I never thought about this uh, happening again. Uh, you know, I thought I would never play golf again. Uh, you all know that, I've said it quite a few times. Um, and to me, uh, to be right here, uh, standing in front of you uh, with a green jacket, uh, you know, it's an achievement that uh, I didn't even dream about it when I was, you know, feeling that low. So, uh, it's great. Not that it matters, but in that final round, no one broke 70. What does seem to matter is what was shared on this golf course that Sunday, that week, this year. Friends and competitors, men who have had to heal their bodies, retest their games, redefine their competitive spirits, and all shared in this particular form of glory that was the 1999 Masters.